Hi everyone, welcome to the third video in my Sizebox tutorial series. Today we're going to look at basic model conversion, where we bring a rigged PMX or FBX file into Sizebox using Unity. PMX files are for a program called Miku Miku Dance, which is an animation program similar to Source Filmmaker. There are many models available for free online. FBX files are a standard file format that are commonly used for exporting into game engines. In a later tutorial, I'll show you how to create PMX files from Blender yourself. Before I begin, I want to note that it's important to respect copyright. Before you share any models you've converted, you should be careful to respect the licensing of any PMX files you come across. Usually it's enough to include a text file with the author's name and contact information, but you should look it up and verify that they're okay with you re redistributing the model. So the tool that you'll be using to do the conversion is Unity. This is also the engine that Sizebox is written in. The key here is that we need to use an older version of Unity, 5.4.3. So what we're going to do is click on Get Unity on the Unity 3D homepage, choose the free personal version, and then we're going to scroll down and go to older versions of Unity. Okay, so what we need to do is find the old version that's appropriate, 5.4.3, and then choose the Unity installer. So this will download the installer uh, that you need, and um, I already have Unity on my system, but the installation is very straightforward. You just use the normal settings, and um, you know that's all there is to that part of it. The next thing that you need is to get the model import package from Ico's mega upload folder. So as I mentioned in my first video, that, in, that stuff is going to be in this model import folder. So what we're going to want is this model importer.zip. So just download that. And another thing you might want to grab is this how to import models.pdf, which contains the information that I'm going over right now. So uh, you could read along with that um, as you're listening to the tutorial or as you decide to try to um, do it yourself. But anyway, um, I've already got Unity on my machine, um, so we're just going to um, run through a conversion uh, and and uh, you know get the get the converter up and running in Unity. So all you need to do is create a new project. Um, it doesn't really matter what it's called. Size box test. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and you just uh, create the project and it will take just a second and give you this empty project here. And once you've done that, all you need to do is take the uh, model importer Unity package. This is going to be contained in that zip, zip file that was on Mega Upload. And you just need to drag and drop this guy into this assets folder. Okay, so uh, it does take a second, um, but then you just import everything. And once this is finished, we will be ready to import PMX files into Sizebox. So the file that I'm going to demo is a horse model, which was modeled by Tefros and rigged by Corvidius. And uh, you'll see that it includes a number of different texture maps, as well as this .pmx file. So Unity is, uh, is quite nice in that it uh, interoperates very well with your file system. So all we need to do is um, drag and drop the files into the right folder. So if you want to convert your model into a giantess, you're going to go into the GTS. It's the very same process for a micro, actually. It will, you just do it in the micro file folder, but today we're going to do a GTS. And all you need to do is drag your PMX file into this folder, and you'll see that the .pmx file, once you've imported that model importer Unity package, it uh, generates this thing, this mmd 4 mechanumasset So um, it'll once you put the PMX file in, it'll generate this thing, and that's what you need to do the conversion. So we're going to go up and choose the inspector here and you need to agree to the terms of service and you need to make sure you consider public order and morals enough. Uh, I think I do that. So then you click that button and then you click process. 
Um, and it brings up this sort of uh, uh, console screen. I hope you just got a glimpse of it. It's, it's not that interesting, but it might take a second if the model is very complicated. And then it'll drop all this stuff into your import folder. So that's good. That means it worked. It didn't run into any snags. So what we're going to do is just uh, put this guy in the world and check him out. So since he's a giantess, he's been scaled up quite a lot, so I'll just zoom out a bunch. And you'll see that the geometry of the horse model has been imported successfully. So that's great, except that he's completely untextured, and we haven't done the textures yet, so it's not surprising. Um, but that is the last thing that we need to do before we import this guy into Sizebox. So you'll notice that he has a bit of an odd look to him. He's, he's very, very bright white, and uh, all the detail has been washed out. And I will show you why that is. So if you go into this Materials subfolder, um, you'll see if we click on the shaders that are being applied to his body, you see his bodies, eyeballs, eyebrows, etc. all have a different shader. Uh, there, the shader model that's being used is this MMD Mechanum slash MMD Lit. Now, the default file uh, shader format for an MMD file is designed for the that anime look, um, which which you would have seen, you know, in in a lot of these models. Um, it's sort of flat shading, and sometimes has outlines and that sort of stuff. So the thing is that a lot of models out there, which use more traditional shader models, are not going to look so great with that kind of with that kind of shading model. So this is something that you're going to get to choose when you import your model. Uh, the, the shaders are something you can set up a little bit. Um, but for a model like this, we're going to want to use a traditional shader. So what we're going to do is switch uh, from this MMD lit to a standard shader. And we'll see already that the lighting looks quite different. Um, uh, the, the, there's um, you know more realistic shadowing. And the maps that we've uh, available to place for the model have changed. Um, and that's going to be important because what this is going to allow us to do is import a normal map. So if you're not familiar with normal maps, um, you know, there's plenty of resources available to look up online, all the details of what these things are. Um, but they're a way to add some more surface detail to a model. And if you, so, you know, here's the, here's a normal map you'll see. But if we went back to this, this MMD lit model, you'll see that there's actually no space for a normal map. So if your model is something that includes normal maps, then probably it was designed for a more standard shader. Um, but that's not something that Miku Miku Dance uses, so it's not available there. Anyway, the actual process of installing these maps is pretty quick. Uh, once you do it, uh, all you need to do is, is take your map and just drag and drop it to the appropriate slot. So albedo is another name for surface color. And you can see that as soon as I drag and drop that map into the albedo slot, we've added uh, the color detail to the body. Now, this normal map here, we can just uh, drag and drop that into this normal map slot, and we'll see that it is completely ruined. Um, everything is destroyed and looking horrible. So uh, unfortunately, that was not what we needed to do. Luckily, it's the, the things that can go wrong uh, are, are pretty, there, there's only a few of them. So the first one is that this texture is not marked as a normal map. So um, all you need to do is just click this Fix Now button, and that will go, that's the same thing as clicking on the texture down here and going Texture Type Normal Map and then unchecking this Create from Grayscale. Um, so, you know, what to do it by hand, you switch to normal map, and then uncheck create from grayscale. The grayscale option would be if that were actually a bump map, not a normal map. Anyway, so now the uh, the body and the tongue maps have been have been converted, but you'll see actually that there's still a problem here. Um, these areas along the sides of his body have these very strange seams where things kind of are flipping around and looking very odd. Um, and that is because the format of the normal map that came in this model pack is actually not the format that Unity was expecting it in. So there are two main formats of normal maps. One of them is OpenGL and one of them is DirectX. And Unity needs a DirectX format. 
Um, luckily, it's pretty easy to change the format from one to the other. So I'll just go through that uh, uh, pretty quickly here. So all I've done is open up this body normal.tga that was included in the model pack. And the only difference between an OpenGL normal map and a DirectX normal map is that the green channel's flipped. So I go into the channels and select the green channel, and then I'm just going to press Control i to invert it. And that's the same as going into Image Adjustments Invert. So I just press Control i and then I've converted this map from in OpenGL to DirectX. So I'll just save this as body and directx.tga. Okay, I'll save that. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll just keep it as the, um, so, oh, looks like it was eight bits, bits per pixel. So maybe I'll just, um, it, you know, pr it, it probably will look all right either way, but I'll just do, um, I'll just make sure that, um, I'll just try uh, doing an eight bit conversion anyway. Oh, 32 bits per pixel, of course. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> um, um, I guess just, well, anyway, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it with 32 bits per pixel for now. Uh, so um, there's uh, this body normal DirectX that I've that I've created. I'm just going to go into Unity and drop this in the folder, and we'll see how this one looks. All right, mark it as a normal map, and perfect. It looks like the seams have been fixed. So that's great, awesome. Right, so the process from here on out is, oh, well, it looks like, well, anyway, you know, some of these things aren't perfect. The, the, these, these, these textures aren't, aren't, aren't perfect re resolution. So, you know, sometimes if you see a small seam, um, that's just sort of the nature of the beast. But yeah, it doesn't look wrong uh, on most of it anyway, so that's fine. Um, anyway, so uh, most of the work from here is just going through each texture individually and applying the appropriate maps. Um, one thing that we are going to do is, um, is, is his hair. That is going to require one slightly different step. Uh, when we do his hair, we're going to use this, instead of standard, we're gonna do standard cull off um, because these hair cards, they're meant to be viewed from two sides. And the standard model, uh, when it, it, it will only show ones that are facing the camera. So you'll see these things in, you know, appear and disappear. Um, so to make sure that they appear from both sides, turn standard call off, and then you won't get those errors. Um, and we just apply the, um, the color to the, the normal map. And the, you know, there might be an opacity map in here somewhere that, um, uh, that that would be uh, useful, but um, it doesn't seem to have been included in this version. So, um, you know, the, this the, these hair things may need a bit of opacity tweaking to them uh, for for a really nice version. But since this is just a demo, we won't worry about that. Um, um, so anyway, what I'm going to do is pause the video. I'm just going to go through all of the shaders uh, by hand and just set up all the maps. And then when I'm back, I will um, show you how to export the PMX and put it in Sizebox. Hey guys, I finished up texturing our horse model here. Um, you can see that I actually uh, was able to fix the hair a bit. Um, this was just a matter of going to this hair and uh, checking this alpha is transparency box. So in Unity, what you need to do is make sure that your there's no separate opacity map. It's always contained in the alpha map of the texture. So if there's supposed to be some transparency going on, then just uh, check that box and it will be applied appropriately. Um, I also did the direct deck conversion for the normal map of the tongue. Uh, one thing I did want to um, mention is that you know you can also tweak some of these shader parameters manually if you want so like like uh, i'm not exactly sure how easy this is going to to see but if i wanted to make his tongue you know a bit shinier um then i could just go into the slider and in increase the smoothness a bit and you know if i wanted to make his body um you know a bit more uh, sort of furry and and uh 
matte looking, then I could just turn down the smoothness uh, to make it more rough. And of course, you know, if you have maps for these sorts of things included in your model, great, you can apply all these maps um, and they will all be converted uh, when you do when you do the conversion for Sizebox. So Sizebox supports everything that the standard Unity shader does, and you can look up any Unity shader tutorial um, on how to uh, get the look of your character the way you like it. Um, but once that's done, we just go back here and we select our model, and there's just uh, two things we need to do. First is we need to hook up the rig to this uh, humanoid animation system here. So we just go into animation type humanoid and click apply. And then, well, let's see if we can, uh, yeah, great. Okay. So then once we've done that, then all we need to do is uh, select our model, go up to this export menu, which should appear on your screen when you, um, once you've installed the exporter, so go to export and export current and it will start processing. You can see that it takes a second here to pack everything up. Perfect. So now that it's finished with the export, we go into this export folder and we'll see GTS. And I'm going to just right click and do show and explore uh, just because that's a little easier. And so we've exported our GTS. And right now it seems to just give it this name GTS.GTS. .gts. Um, that might change in a future version, but I'm just going to rename it uh, course.gts. And you'll see that this file size um, is, is fairly large, 30 megabytes, so it definitely has included all the textures and all the uh, information that we need. And then I'm just going to go into my size box folder and drop our GTS in the Giantess uh, folder. Well, it looks like this horse was um, already taken, so I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just call it a horse uh, test. <laughs> And we'll run Sizebox, and that should be all that we need to do. Just select the standard stuff here. Get up. Add our check our uh, giant list and yeah, there's a horse test, and he looks like he has um, uh, been hooked up and is walking around properly. So, yep. I hope you guys um, you know find a bunch of cool models, share them with me, uh, making sure to attribute the creators properly, um, and as always, have fun.